Hey everybody, this is part two of lesson four. So let's get started. So now we're gonna go over strings and how to manipulate strings and what you can do in Java with strings. So let's just go to the first example. So we have a string called str and it holds the string called something, right? So that's what the value is for str. So let's say you want an array, right, of characters spelling out something. So you can what you can do is take the variable name str, use the dot operator like this, and you can see the list of methods or functions, right, that Eclipse gives you. So you can select two char array like this, and what this what this will do is it'll store the array of characters in str, which is the word something, into this array, right? This variable called array, which is an array of characters, right? Which makes sense because you that's what you want, right? You want an array of characters, so you want to store it into a type of array of characters. If I tried int, right, this wouldn't work because they're not compatible types, right? We're not looking for an array of integers, we're looking for an array of characters. So you have to make sure you have the right typing. So this is something really useful for string manipulation. And so just to prove it to you, what I did was I put a for loop through this array and I just print out each character in the array. And you can see that it just prints S-O-M-E and it spells something, right, all the way through. So that's one particular function or method that you can use when you have a string variable, right, using the dot operator. Now, you might be wondering what methods are, what functions are, or like where do the dot operators come from, right? Why can't, like why are you allowed to use the dot operator and then call like a bunch of other things, right? Those things will be explained. So I'm gonna go over methods in lesson five, and then we're gonna go over classes and objects in lesson six. So you'll have the complete picture by then. So just, but for now, just remember, just keep in, just remember the fact that you have your variable name of a string and you can use this dot to call a particular set of functions and it will give you something back, right? And you gotta store it somewhere. So until we go over those things after lessons in lessons five and six, you won't really know what's really going on, but hopefully this is enough information to get your head around it. Now, another one of these functions that you can use is the trim method. So when I use say function or method, for now, I'm not gonna distinguish between the two in Java, I'm just gonna use the word method though. So instead of just saying function or method, I'm just gonna say method. So you have a method that you can use when you have the word gaps, right? Or we have the, we have the word bam stored into gaps and bam has a bunch of spaces in between right here and right here, right? So what this will do, what the trim method will do is that it'll cut out all the unnecessary spaces that you don't want. So when you print it out without trimming it, you see it has all the space, right? You can, when I highlight it, you can see the entire spaces. But after I call trim and store it back into the variable and print it out again, it removes all the spaces, right? So there's no space in between anywhere, right? But in here, you can it prints out everything in between the quotations. So that can be really useful. And another one that's used pretty often is the method substring, right? So the way substring works is that you have a letter or you have a word and a string and you store it into a variable, right? Then you can call substring and then put these integers inside the parentheses and those are the parameters of how many characters you want in, in the string. So when I put zero to four, it'll grab the first letter because that's the first index, index zero, right? Zero base indexing and all the way up till index three, right? Which is the fourth letter. So basically it's inclusive, exclusive. So it includes the first number you put in, the first index, but it does not include the last index. So when you say zero to four, it'll grab the first four letters, right? Not, not five, but four, right? If it included four, it would grab the first five, but this is exclusive right here. So it only grabs the first four. So this should grab the first four letters of this string. So it should print out sum. So if you see what it prints out, it does print out sum. So just keep in mind that it's inclusive, exclusive, and that these two numbers that you put in here represent 
the index of the characters you want to range from. So if I got like from four to eight, right, it would grab the fourth index all the way up to the seventh index. So just keep that in mind. And that's how substrings work. Now for the next thing is kind of the opposite. So substring takes out a particular set of words that you want, right? So you, I could have gotten the last four, the middle four, whatever. Concatenating, which is concat for short, is when you want to combine two strings together. So I have this string with sum, and I want to concatenate it with this word called thing, right? So what should happen is the sum and thing should come together and they should be concatenated, right? They should be attached with each other. So that's what happens here. We have some thing, right? So the sum and thing, they get combined together. So that's how con concat works. Now, another way to concatenate strings that I personally like better is to do it like this. So I have a string variable like here, and then I have a for loop, right? And I just put a for loop, random for loop, and I just ran it five times, right? So this string var is just an empty string, right? It doesn't have anything in between it. So what I did was, every time we go through the loop, I just add a, 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 a five times, right? So what we should expect is when we print out var like this, var, we should expect to see five a's, right? So when I run it, you can see it right here that it prints out a, 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 right? So basically what I did was, so the way strings work in concatenation, you can use like this plus equals, right? Something like with integers, right? You can do plus equals to add on top of things over and over each other, right? So basically what this does is it adds var, so the first time it goes through the loop, it's an empty string, but now we have a added to it. So now it's actually just a, right? The next time we go through the for loop, we add var to itself again with a, so it becomes a plus a, so we get a, a. And then we do this five times, so we keep going, so the third time in the loop it's a, 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 right? So we keep going, and that's why we have five a's here. And that's basically one way to concatenate strings using the plus equals, right? So another example here is I have a string called stra and strb. So the first word, stra, is bam, and the strb is boo. So if I do stra plus equals strb, right, that means we're going to add bam and boo together. And what we should get is bam boo, right? And that's what we get down here. So that's another way to concatenate strings that I personally like better. Now for two uppercase, this will turn your string and turn every single letter into an uppercase, like you did right here. All you have to do is pass in a string, right? It doesn't have to be the variable. You can just, I could also do this right here. But, <clears throat> I mean, it's unnecessary because I already have a variable that holds something anyways. And this will turn everything into uppercase characters. And likewise, you can call to lowercase, right? There's a to lowercase method, and that will make everything lowercase. Now, another useful method is this dot length method. So I have something, right? This has, I believe, nine letters. So... When I call str dot operator and then length, parentheses, parentheses, this should return an integer, right? Which is why I have int, right? I have an int variable, len, for length. So this should print out nine, which it does right here. And then lastly, in the last video, in part one, I explained why you can't use the equals equals or does not equals operator with strings, right? The reason why you can't do them is because strings are not primitives, remember. They're objects. So, luckily, the string class has a dot operator method called dot equals. So I have two strings, right? So if the first two st strings are the same, they both say nothing, and the third string says nothing, right? Like literal, not like nothing, the actual word nothing. So when I say str1 dot equals, and then put str2 as the parameter in it, this is going to compare if str1 is the same word as str2, which it should be, right? Because they're both called something. So it should print out the two strings are equal, which we see here. Now, if you want to see if they're not equal, one way to do it, the way I like to do it is put this 
this exclamation. Remember, exclamation means not, right? That's logical not. And I put not str1 equals str3. So this checks if these two things are not equal to each other or checks if they are different from each other, which obviously they are different, right? So it's going to print out that they are not equal. It's going to print out this statement and not this statement because this, this is the statement that's true. That's what it prints out, right? Now, if you want to do it a different way, like instead of just putting exclamation mark in the front, you can also do it like this, where you put it, you use Boolean. So you say does not equal, and then you say this is true, right? So what this is saying is you compare this value, right? So these things are not equal, right? So this is not true, and you compare it with not true, so this is actually a true statement, right? This entire conditional is actually a true statement because you're comparing if these two strings are not equal to each other, which is not true. Therefore, we have a true conditional, and therefore this print line statement will execute, right? Or you could just say equals equals false, right? This is the equivalent, right? And this means that obviously those two things don't equal each other, so it's false, right? So we basically, this thing turns into a false, and this is equal equal false right so this is obviously becomes a true statement like this right so the same thing is happening when we have this statement right this is obviously not true so this basically turns into a true statement right but i guess this is a little more complicated a little more overhead in like a thought process so i feel like this is just a lot easier but if you're more comfortable using the booleans then you can go ahead and do that but I just prefer doing it this way. So that's it for part two for manipulating strings. So the last part in part three, we're going to use the scanner class right here and we're going to learn how to get user input. So I'll see you then.